Hi everyone, I'm Namya Joshi and I study in grade 8 in Southbound Middle School, India. And today I'm so glad that you all joined me because I'll be presenting on how we can engage learners using game-based learning because I'm one of the learners about game-based learning because I've been using that in the classrooms and also learning with that. So I'll be sharing my perspectives on different applications and how I love using them. So first of all, I'll be telling you a little bit about why is game-based learning important and what is game-based learning helping us to do? So the first thing is deeper classroom engagement and interaction. So for example, if there's some students who never used to speak before or barely even speak in a class. So if my game-based learning will be used in the classrooms, those students will get interactive and will start speaking. And I'll tell you how, because some of the tools that I'm going to present today will actually teach you that how you can use them in the classrooms to make it more engaging. We can understand about difficult concepts, use it for discovering ourselves, also learning, object modeling, and a good news, it can also help a work with the help of Android and iOS phones. So I'm sure we all love to play games because uh, the word that our brain loves is play. So if we can use games for fun, we can also use games for education. And when the games for fun and education combine, they become as gamification in education. And it, uh, the output is actually amazing. Now the first tool that is one of my favorite, it's an application called Minecraft. And I love it because it is able to support the SDG goal number four, that is quality education. As education impacts on the whole material and spiritual life of a human being, therefore improving the quality of education motivates the development of the country and contributes us to fulfill the UN SDG goals. Now, this is the lesson plan structure that the teachers use in the classroom that goes from introduction, development, summation, evaluation, and reflection. And it's being used like this. So Minecraft can be used in all the perspective of lesson plan structure. For example, we go from the introduction. So you have to introduce the students about a mathematical concept. So you just put a little bit about that and then show it in Minecraft. When it goes well, you can start developing on the later parts of it. Then you come upon the summation. And the last two, which are my favorite, is you give the students the task that, okay, now we've taught you, let's see what you learned. And they start building in Minecraft and then they can actually get more excited because you don't give them any written papers or MCQ questions. You give them an entire world of their own imagination to build whatever they like or whatever they learned. So it's not basically rote learning, it's just your imagination. Now, why Minecraft? Because of these four things. First, student engagement, because I talked about how students can learn and be more engaging than they were before. Next is collaboration. So it helps the students to sit together with each other and also with the teacher and collaborate with them with their own ideas and different perspectives they have of looking at the problems that the teacher gives them. Then is creative exploration because it helps them to go through all their ideas that they have to make the summation or by looking at it, everyone has a different perspective of seeing things. So if a teacher has built like a structure, so they view it with like proper excitement and they love to see and also when they make it in Minecraft, it becomes with their own creativity and ideas. And lastly, it gives you student-centered outcomes. Now I'll be telling you how teaching with Minecraft helps you a lot. And these are all the skills that you will use, uh, with you will gain when you use Minecraft engagement, relevance. You will learn how to explore yourself. You'll learn why deep learning is important than rote learning. You'll know about self-motivation. You'll become independent than on books or anybody else because you can use your own ideas and you become dependent on yourself. I mean, you become independent and you can also learn on yourself than just um, getting the books for you and 
just focusing on what the teacher says. You can learn from your own ideas that you get. And also you have more classroom extension. You learn about differentiation and also digital citizenship with esports and different concepts. So these are the sub, uh, some of the ideas that I've built in different subjects, like we have English, so Harry Potter in literature, maths, area and volume, history, epic Ramayana, geography about countries who play cricket, science, states of matter and chemistry, and also respiratory system and biology. Here we have art, wherein we have Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, and in computer science, we have cybersecurity. So different perspectives of different subjects when you can create whatever you think about. Um, I also actually believe that augmented reality and virtual reality help a lot in classroom engagement. So here's another tool for you that is known as 3D Bear. So this will help you to come out into augmented reality in the classrooms and it's the most engaging tool for any subject. So you can go to uh, 3dbear.io, create an account there, and it also works on the iOS phone and Android, wherein you can use that as an app. So this is why educators and students love 3D Bear, including me. The first thing, it helps you in video recording, and you can also give a voiceover to it. So you can see this is it's on your hand and you're just speaking out whatever you want to say. Next, it has 500 plus curated 3D models in the collections, which is absolutely amazing. You can import your own 3D models from also import from Thingverse. And you don't need to worry if you're a newbie and you just started using 3D Bear. You have lots of ready-made challenges, lessons that you can use for classroom engagement. You just go and search for the thing that you want for the subject. And you can see it has been divided into challenges, lessons, and classroom engagement. So you can choose the class, see the lesson you want to take, and go for it. And it is imperative that we teach the students the skills that last a lifetime. And these are the skills that we all talk about every day, which are the four C's, creativity, critical thinking, communication, and collaboration. And now let me tell you how these can be fulfilled with 3D Bear. So about creating a story. So maybe in the section, the students were given to read three of fairy tales, and then they created that in 3D Bear, which is using different variations. Like you can see this is an image, but it kind of looks like a trail, but no, it's just an image. And you can see we have different animals and fairies. This is just image of a plain garden, but you brought it to life by putting fairies, different um, bushes. So it looks beautiful because you're using that with your own creativity. Then you have problem solving and decision making. So you can see this is all empty and we can use that for redesigning a public space with the problem solving skills. We can make it more tidier and you make decisions that, OK, do I want this or do I not want this? So it helps you to rack your brains, but in a positive way. You also have about creativity and collaboration together. So maybe there has been a task provided in the class that how do you think and how do you believe that a playground looks like for you? And you tell the students to sit together and just think about the ideas. So maybe I'm sitting with my friend, we both are thinking creatively and we are collaborating and we're also solving problems that, okay, where do we fix this thing? So we learn different aspects with just a single tool. Isn't that amazing? Now, this is one of my favorite example. Just look at how beautifully and also amazingly the formula of photosynthesis has been told like H2O with the blue ball because it's water. We have CO2, glucose and some leaves. So of the ones who don't understand what photosynthesis by just looking at this they understand that okay yes this is photosynthesis because i had seen it not read it and another scenes you can create from a book so these are just like about using your own objects with your own imagination where you can use thingverse and create whatever you read into like a 3d environment if you uh, just like open your phone you just um, take an image 
or you uh, look about the life surroundings about you and you start creating the things on that. Now, I'm also going to talk about Merge Cube and 3D, uh, Paint 3D. So these are basically the tools in which you can create your own 3D models um, and then you can view that in your hand just like this. So let's see how we can do that. So you can see it looks pretty beautiful when you're viewing it like this because this is a model that has been created in Paint 3D. And now this is the Merge Cube. We use the Merge VR app for that. And we can view that in just our hand. So I'll tell you how it works. So let's quickly watch this video. So this is Paint 3D. You can see uh, you have different things. So we go to the 3D library wherein we can search for different things. So let's see what we search. Um, we're searching about probably a tooth. Okay, we're gonna get a 3D model of a tooth. Uh, we import it. It's gonna take time to for importing. After that, we can resize it according to our wish. And we can see from all angles because it is 3D. And then you go to menu, you click on save as and as a 3D model. So it's gonna save it as a 3D model and you can uh, save it from like .glb or .fbx. I recommend you using fbx because that's a better resolution. And after you're done, you have to go to miniverse.io where you can create your own account. And then on that, you can uh, just go on sign in, create an account, and then you can uh, move on to my objects. In my objects, you just have to click on add new. After you click on that, you choose the file, and then we just save that file over here. So we click on the file, import it, and it'll upload that for you. And then you can open the app on your phone, wherein you can view the model in your hand. So it's gonna upload it. Let's move a little bit ahead. So it's been uploaded. And after that, you download the app on your phone. You get the code, you add the code there, and then you can view it with a 3D model that's known as Merge Cube. You can also get the printout of the Merge Cube, build it yourself, and you can uh, work upon it. Now comes one of my second favorite tools, another favorite tools, I must say, that is Flipgrid because that helps you to share your student voice, your choice, and also it impacts your own decisions. Now let's tell me tell you about how you can use Flipgrid. So it can be used for maybe having feedback, sharing your life goals, the reflections, questions and ideas. So let me share you with some of the subjects, like if you're using social studies, it can be used for maybe uh, communicating globally, maybe mystery Skype sessions and you have writing where maybe someone wrote something and I can share the, okay, this is what I've written. I hope you like it. And in art, you can show your art that you've created. You can sing, you can show your science experiments, you can read out, you can also show the math solutions. So there are plenty of things, but also one thing is if you're shy, you don't want to speak in the class, this is the best tool for you because you just have to speak to the camera and share out all the things that you want. And that will help you to gain more confidence. Uh, it will improve your uh, vocational skills and also your speaking skills. So I talked about all of the applications in here and I'm sure you must have got the idea that how game-based learning can be used in education with all different tools to make learning engaging. And don't just restrict yourself to these tools. These are the, some of the tools that I like. If you have any other tools that you think that can make a difference, you should go for it. And you should always be aware about the things happening around you so you can build competencies and capabilities so that you can bring a change in the world where everyone can benefit from your ideas. And I must end by saying this, that thousands of candles can be lit from a single candle and the life of the candle will not be shortened. So what are you waiting for? Let's join the bandwagon to make the world a better place to live in because the world is your oyster. Thank you so much, everyone. Each one, teach 10 and the journey continues. And you can find me on Twitter at WonderNamya. I'm also on LinkedIn. And you can go to my website. It's very pre pretty simple, namiajoshi.com. 
where you can find all about me, the work that I'm doing, and also where you can contact me online. So I hope you liked it. Thank you so much for joining me today.